Say you want a fancy set of Weeha screwdrivers for building Vorons, but you're cheap, or you ain't got no money left because you've been buying Voron parts. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to get this Weeha Power Blade Security Hex 4-piece set. Item number 76090. Doesn't have the 2 millimeter that you need for the M3 button heads, but it's got the next three sizes up, which is most of what you're going to use on the Voron. Five will end up not being used. This runs from 8 to 12 bucks. You can buy the 2 millimeter separately, but it's going to cost you as much as this whole pack. So the security bit just means that it has this hole in the center, which doesn't affect anything for our purposes. But they don't sell this in non-security with these 90 millimeter shafts on them. The reason you need this 90 millimeter shaft so on parts like this, you can reach through there and actually get into the recessed areas instead of just buying the short tips and not being able to reach these areas. If you're saying, I want the 2 millimeter, but I'm still too cheap to buy the Weeha. Well, these are S2 modified tool steel hardened to HRC60. So as long as the other ones you're looking at are S2 2 S2 tool steel, hardened to HRC60, as long as they're being honest about what it is, they should be comparable. I have noticed that on the cheaper bits, these corners are real sharp on the front, like it's just chopped off. On these Weehaws, you can see it's rounded just a little bit, so you might want to take some sandpaper and ease the edge of those cheaper ones because that just helps it float into place rather than having a sharp corner that's going to dig into the head of the bolt. So once you get your bits, we need some handles. I've done a little R&D come up with what I think is a good handle. So this is the handle. It's just press fit. So you might have to adjust. You might have to scale this when printing it. It's a few percent smaller or larger until you get this to fit tight. So I would start printing it, stop it like this far up, check the fit. Once you get a real tight fit, print them all at that scale. And then so we know what screw it's to be used for. I put the screws on the back. You see an M5 button head. You grab the driver with the M5 button head on top. That's the right one. I would color code these if I bought any filament other than gray, white, and black. I do have some clear. So you got an M5 socket head. That goes an M5 socket head. You got an M3 socket head. And the way I designed this, I wanted to be able to index it. Just flip it like that when screwing and unscrewing. And then these flat parts here that's what's rubbing against your hand so it doesn't develop any hot spots. And then if you need to really tighten on something, you can work it like that or grip it by the sides on the flats. And this has got six indentations. I tried four, wasn't enough. Tried five, felt okay on the top, but your finger that's on the bottom felt weird, so we settled on six. Yeah, so I ended up using a different color screw for the uh, M3 button head. And I ordered it, but it's not arrived yet. These drivers themselves, the bits themselves, I've been using them for like a year, and they've been good. 
So I finally got around to making these handles. I'm not sure where or how these will actually be stored, but I started messing around with making a holder for pegboard. And one of the things I hate when I see it in pegboard is when people have holders where the screwdriver has to pass all the way through. And you've got to have a bunch of free space above it for it to lift all the way out. So, stuff like this, just have a little lip for it to come over. These. You only got to pick up one of them a little bit. This holder is not really ready for prime time. Um, doesn't fit any of the pegboard, different types of pegboard in my house very well, but I'll include one with a flat back on it so people can adapt it to whatever their setup uses. And I'm still waiting on the uh, two millimeter.